President Obama starts his second term after winning a substantial victory, but the election did not change many of the basic fights here in Washington. Earlier, I sat down with Peter Baker to talk to him about what the next four years may bring and how much this inauguration differs from President Obama's first. What was interesting is the last inauguration, of course, was this period of great crisis for the country. You know, uh, actually a very grim moment when the economy was on the precipice and the auto industry seemed, you know, heading into the abyss and still in the middle of two wars. And yet, it was a moment of hope and optimism, at least among the people who supported President Obama. There was this notion of historic change, first African-American president, 1.8 million people on the mall to see this moment. This time around, no second term inauguration is ever as exciting as the first. We'll have a, a half to a third of that many people this time, and the people who are going to be taking office are the people who are already in office. So they're a little jaded and a little uh, seasoned and a little uh, uh, battle weary. We, we've been very focused on how the highs are lower. But the lows are also higher, as you're saying. I mean, right. we're not in the middle of a terrible economic crisis. At exactly. This point. Yeah, they're inheriting a better situation. You know, the economy's not great, but there is a prospect of a better uh, a year ahead. Um, obviously, they're focused on the fiscal issues, which are pretty daunting, a big national debt that still needs to be tackled, but not um, an acute sense of, uh, of crisis that we felt, I think, four years ago. Rahm Emanuel famously said, you never want to let a crisis go to waste. Right. And by that, he meant that when, when there are very bad times going on in the country, you actually have a chance to fix some of the underlying problems. Right. Does that suggest that we're not going to see as ambitious and sweeping a second term in terms of legislation coming from the White yeah. House? Yeah, it's interesting. I think a second term president often tries to swing for the fences in different ways because he's thinking about legacy. A first term president wants one thing, a second term. But with a Republican House, unless he can change that in the midterms of, of, of two years from now, will constrain him and the fiscal situation will constrain him. There's a limit to how much he can do. So I think he'd like to try something big and sweeping. I think he sees immigration as that possibility and possibly tax reform. Uh, Reagan did that in his second term. But the, uh, the range of options are more limited this time around. Now, you and I were talking a little bit about this week, the history of how bad second terms yeah. are. I mean, Reagan had Iran-Contra, Clinton had impeachment, Nixon resigned. Right. Who wants a second term? Who wants a second term? I mean, <laughs> George W. Do. Bush <laughs> didn't have any kind of major, major scandal like uh, Watergate, but he had a really bad second term. Yeah, bad, he had yeah, Katrina, he had Harriet Meyer's Supreme Court nomination go down, and obviously Iraq was, a, was, was terrible. And then, and then the very end, of course, was the financial crisis. Do you think they've sat around and talked about the second term curse? And think, do you think they're doing anything to try to avoid it? I think they've talked about exactly that. And I think that their hope is that they can plan their way out of it, that they can have an agenda that will control the second term a little bit more. But they recognize that a president only uh, uh, has so much power in this. Uh, even before he took office as president, uh, some of his aides remember then Senator Barack Obama observing that a president really only controls about 15, 20 percent of what he does and that everything else tends to be reactive and that's the that's the inevitable uh, forecast I think you have to make for the next four years. And finally the inauguration itself we actually have two. Yeah. It's a little strange. He's the first president since FDR who will take the oath of office four times, right? Four years ago he had to do a second time, a do-over because the Chief Justice and he didn't quite get the right words right. This time around he's going to take it on a Sunday but the, when we do it on a Sunday, we then do it again on a Monday. So it's an interesting uh, moment where he'll do it semi-privately on Sunday. There'll be cameras there and so forth, but no big parade. We're going to hold the big festivities on Monday. So he and the Chief Justice this time, they have two, two built in. So if they mess up the first, That's they can exactly do That's exactly right. I hope there's some practicing going on, but they're going to, they're, I think they want to get this right this time.